Good morning, Terra Nova Church. We gather virtually today to worship and to respond to a compassionate God who knows every aspect of our lives. We don't have to pretend like life is without pain or darkness. We don't have to live as if this social distancing isn't bothering us. We can openly bring our brokenness and our hurt to him because he is faithful to listen and will grant us mercy. We can search the scriptures and see how he cares for us and loves us and he will never leave us. I wanna encourage us this morning with a psalm and I want us to echo this response of the psalmist together as we begin our time in worship today. Let's say this psalm together. I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple-hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O oh my soul, for the Lord has been good to you.
pray with me this prayer of confession as we continue in our time of worship. All glory and honor belong to you, Creator God. We come before you as sinners in need of your mercy and strength. Forgive us for seeking out comfort in the failing pleasures of this world. Forgive us for resting our hope on the shoulders of broken, empty things. Forgive us for doubting and rejecting your great love. It is only by the blood of your Son, Jesus, that we are saved and sustained. May we acknowledge and receive the power of the cross of Christ as we humbly fall at your throne of grace. Jesus, I surrender all to Him, my free give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. Jesus I 
Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful Resurrection Day last week, also known as Easter, where we celebrate every year Jesus, the God-man, who walked out of the tomb, the one who defeated our twin supervillains of sin and death. And we celebrate that. And we celebrate that once a year. We can also celebrate that every single day. Always something to be thankful for and a reason to praise God. And because he walked out of that tomb, it changes everything. It changes our lives. It changes the meaning and the point of our lives. Everything, every aspect of who we are and what we do should revolve around him. And that includes where we store our treasures. And that's what Jesus talks about in the Sermon on the Mount. We're back in Matthew, and the king has been teaching about the kingdom and instructing what it's like to be a kingdom citizen. And in this passage in Matthew 6, he talks about where we are storing our treasures. I have behind me, very elegantly, these two little suitcases, one representing the kingdom of heaven and the other one representing the kingdom of this world. And every day of our lives, we are packing away things in one of these two suitcases. Every decision we make, everything we say, what we're living for, our motivation, we are packing our bags because we're all going somewhere and we're all living for something. And the question today for our main idea of this passage is this, where are you storing your treasure? Where are you storing your treasure? And here's our breakdown for our roadmap. Uh, in this passage, he talks about two treasures, verses 19 through 20, two eyes in verses 21 through 24, and two masters in verses 25 through 34. So first of all, two treasures, verses 19 through 20. Treasure, one, treasure number one, kingdom of this world. Treasure number two, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, right? Two suitcases, two treasures. So for the kingdom of this world, which we're all bent to do, by the way, we're all prone to put away treasure for this life alone. And we do that by, by spending ourselves and living for wealth or stuff, right? We're prone to, to, to care more about numbers in a bank account, technology and toys, houses and property, vehicles, clothing, food, the list goes on of things that we spend ourselves on and try to live for. And, and if we don't have those things, we can't have peace or joy or motivation to, to live. And those are all things of the kingdom of this world, none of which are wrong in themselves. There's nothing wrong about a car or about, about clothing, nothing wrong about those things. There's, it's not wrong to have, it's wrong when those things have you, when they are central importance in our lives as we pack away for the kingdom of this world. And Jesus points out in verses 19 through 20, that if you're living for the kingdom of this world, if you're packing your suitcase for this kingdom alone, by the time you pick it up, you're going to notice there's a hole in the bottom of it, right? In verse 19, he says, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. He, he mentions these three things, moth, thieves, and rust. Moth representing nature, right? He, he uses bugs here for, to represent this. Bugs can eat away the things that you've been storing away. Right? Natural disasters, nature, can take away what you have been working towards your whole life. For years and years and years, a tornado or something can come in there and sweep it away. Moth can take it away. Thieves can take it away. If, if nature doesn't, people can and have and perhaps will. Will come in and steal away what you've been working for, what you've been storing away for however long. And if moth, nature, thieves, other people don't come and steal it away, Time eventually will, when he says rust. All the stuff for the kingdom of this world, all the stuff we store away for ourselves, will wear away or be lost over time. It's inevitable. There's a hole in the bottom of the suitcase of the kingdom of this world. Now, I did not carve in a hole because this is actually a nice suitcase. Uh, but you can imagine the time you pick up this suitcase, if you've been storing away just for the kingdom of this world, you pick it up and you're going to know you can't take it with you. We're all leaving. We're all going somewhere. And you can't take that suitcase with you. Nothing in it. And everybody knows that deep down. It's, it's, it's very practical. We all know this. You can't keep it with you. You came into this world naked. You leave naked. Hopefully you didn't spend too much time naked in between. But you're leaving with nothing. There's a hole, there's a hole at the bottom of that suitcase. So don't, don't choose it. He says, choose the kingdom of God. Choose the kingdom of heaven. Verse 20, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven 
where neither moth nor rust destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. When you live for the eternal heavenly kingdom of God, your treasure is safe. No moth, no thief, no rust will take it away. Nature, other people, time can't touch it. God is storing it away for you when you live for him. There's no hole on the bottom of that suitcase, not in the heavenly suitcase, the one on the right. There's no hole in that one. As a Christian, as a Christ follower, you can't lose what you already have. You can only add to it. Can't lose it. You can only add to it. When you repented, when you turned from your sins and you believed in Jesus, you were given a bunch of things, a bunch of awesome things that you can't lose. First of all, you were given the Holy Spirit of God. You were given God to dwell in you, the seal of the promise of your eternal dwelling place in heaven, the comforter, the empowerer, the one who points you to Jesus over and over and over again. You were given the Holy Spirit. You can't lose him. You were adopted into the family of God. You were your son. You're a daughter of the king. And the best joys you have in your family in this life are hints of that joy, to be with God, your father, and to be with the people of God, your siblings, if you will, for all time. You've been adopted. Romans 8, Galatians 4. Can't lose it. You have an inheritance that you can't lose. That's spoken of in Romans 8 and Ephesians chapter 1 as well. What's your inheritance? Better question is, what is not your inheritance? Jesus says, uh, Paul says in Romans 8 rather, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not with him also graciously give us all things, all things, the creator of every good and perfect gift wants to give you all things, the world. If you aim for heaven, this is what C.S. Lewis said, if you aim for heaven, you get earth thrown in. If you aim for earth, you get neither, right? He, give, he wants to give you everything. In his, at his right hand are pleasures forever. In his presence is fullness of joy, and you can't lose those things. What else? Well, you're the bride of Christ, he says in Revelation 21. His for all time. These are these are just incredible promises, inc incredible realities that are yours as a as a follower of Christ uh, for all time. And you can't lose it. Since the moment you you repented and turned to Jesus, the moment you turned to the Lord, the God man, everything you've done in this life, in his name, motivated and empowered by him you will be rewarded for, 1 Corinthians 3. And rewards that you will not lose, that are forever. That's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, be always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It can't be stolen away. Pack your suitcase, store your treasure for the kingdom of God. It might be a good time to take a second and just ask yourself, have you been doing that? What are you investing we're all investing in something. We're all putting away stuff in one of those two suitcases. What are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your talents, your resources, what God has given to you? What are you doing with those things? Are you storing them away for the kingdom of God? I need this reminder personally all the time. That's why I literally wrote it on my wall in my bathroom. Um, and I have this professional camera crew. Hey, really appreciate all of you. Who's going to take you to show you where I wrote that on my wall. Is he taking us to his bathroom? Yep, yep, yes he is. Thank you, professional camera crew. I'm going to follow you guys just to make sure you do a good job. Really appreciate it as we are in the bathroom. Look at that. Right there, just on the wall to remind myself, where are you storing your treasure? Thank you, camera crew. Really appreciate it. You can just set it back where you were, setting up. What a great crew. <laughs> Store your treasure for the kingdom of God. Unlike the kingdom of this world, the kingdom of stuff, the kingdom of self, as a Christ follower, you can't lose what you have. What you already have stored away in him, you can only add to it. He talks about these two treasures, and then he transitions to talk about two eyes in verses 21 through 24, and how our eyes reveal our treasure. And next to our treasure will always lay our heart. You see, our eyes fixate on what we value, on what we treasure. And as we fixate and gaze upon what we value, our eyes become the conduit that fills our heart. And so our eyes illuminate our inner life. The evil eye, he says, is always fixated on the treasures of this world for their value, for their personal significance, 
for their security. And if someone's eyes is merely fixed on this kingdom, we can know the kingdom of this world. We can know that darkness fills that person, that the kingdom of darkness guides that person and that evil fills that person's heart. And as that person will inevitably lose everything in this kingdom of the world, that they will also lose their heart with it. But if your eye is focused on the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, we know that light fills that person. Jesus said in John 8, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And he says in chapter 12, I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. If we believe in Jesus, we have light. We, we have direction. We have purpose and hope, and he fills his people. And if you're like me, you need the constant help and reminder to live for him, to have the right motivation, to go in one direction, have united purpose. It's really difficult to make progress if your eyes are looking in two separate directions. In fact, eyes can't look two different ways, unless you're my sister who can do this trick where her eyes just like start to go the different directions. And my mom would always say, stop, they're going to get stuck that way. And fortunately, they never did. Um, but realistically, we can't look in two different directions. We can only look one way. And we need that motivation and that help and that encouragement to walk towards him, to look to the world through him. He talked about two treasures and then two eyes and now two masters. Two treasures and two eyes culminate in the choice between two masters, God or money, verses 25 through 34. Or another way of saying it, reliance upon God or reliance upon ourselves. Now, we know how useful money can be and how many problems it seems to solve. In fact, the author of Ecclesiastes goes as far to say, sarcastically, money solves everything. And I think we resonate with that, not just because of the sarcasm in the Northeast, but because of what he said. Money seems to solve so many problems. How often do you say to yourself, if I only had more money, I could fix this. If I only had more money, I could solve this problem. And yet, as useful as money can be, it can create more problems than it solves if our hearts pursue money rather than God. Money, as useful as it is, makes a terrible God and a terrible Savior. So how can we make sure that our hearts are pursuing the God of creation rather than the God of money? We listen to the words of Jesus, because that's always a good idea. <laughs> he directs our thoughts toward birds and flowers in this topic. And with more time on your hands for most of you this week, maybe go for a walk, take a gander at some flowers and birds, and think about these words of Jesus. He says, look at the lilies of the field. They don't fret about the future, and yet God clothes them in more beauty than we could purchase, than more beauty than money could buy. Think about the birds. They're not planning, they're not worried about the future, and yet God provides for them every day. They don't have bird 401ks. They don't have bird money that they're sticking in bird wallets and bird purses and yet God provides. And he's calling us to have a deep trust in his personal care and provision for us. That is how we're gonna be able to take one day at a time and not worry about the future. That is how we're gonna be able to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If we don't worry ourselves about the future, when we finally drop our guard and say, look, I can work hard, I can plan for the future, but I don't need to worry about it. It's I am not ultimately responsible for my future. I can drop that self-reliance. I can believe that God cares and that God provides. That ultimately my provision comes from him. It comes from his hand. It comes from the Lord, the Lord, our provider. God knows this isn't easy for us. God knows the struggle we have. God knows that 80% of the people he was speaking to in the first century, the Greco-Roman world, lived on a day-to-day -day basis, and that many people today are in that same boat, probably not most of us listening to this video, which causes us to especially listen to these words, it should, and note, our provision comes from God every day, every single day, 
and it can be taken the things we've stored away and, and, and put away for the future can be removed so very quickly. And our hope should be in him. Our security should be in him, the Lord, our provider. The one that gave us bodies can give us clothes. The one that gave us hunger for food on a daily basis can fill that hunger. And so we can seek him first. Now, as we all too often are filling up that wrong suitcase that we talked about and choosing the wrong master. Remember these suitcases here? Kingdom of, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of the world. We all too often fill up the wrong suitcase. Our hope is in Jesus, the one person who filled that one suitcase of the kingdom of God from his first incarnated breath until his final dying gasp on the cross, the only one who lives a perfect life. We look to him. We praise him. Our comfort, our security, our hope is not because of how good a job we think we've done, but because of the perfect work that Jesus accomplished, his perfect life and his substitutionary death on the cross for us. He used his two eyes to gaze directly and for one purpose and one direction in pleasing God. His eyes, it says, were set like a flint toward Jerusalem to go and to die for the sins of the world. His choice of, the, of one master to serve was God himself was the father. Even in dreadful anticipation of what it would be like to endure that pain on the cross, he cries out in Gethsemane, your will be done, not mine. He chose the kingdom of God. He chose the Lord and he did it perfectly. And that's where our hope is. It's in him, it's in Jesus. So as we take communion together and we remember his death for us, his, his body broken, his blood poured out on the cross for our forgiveness. We do this together, yet still apart for a little while. And we don't worry about the future. We trust him. We take it one day at a time and we seek him, our true treasure. Thank God for Jesus, who filled the right suitcase of the kingdom of God to the max and gave it to us. And because of that, we know that when we go home, we're opening not our suitcase, but his. And we praise him for it. We praise Jesus. Amen. Are you hurting?
Lost in sin, held captive by my fear. Till your mercy showed, your hand was reaching me. My God, you came and made a way for me. You made a way for me. I was lost in sin. Lost in sin, held captive by my fear, till your mercy showed. Your hand was reaching me, my God. You came and made a way for me. You made a way for me, my Jesus, gracious Redeemer.
Good day, Terra. My name is Dennis Gardner. I serve as the Operations Director at Terra in Troy. If you have been watching Pastor Ed's update videos this past Thursday was one of them, you'll remember that he talked about the many ways that we can continue to be the church by helping our regular longtime service partners. The description below this video panel is going to have a bunch of links. One is going to be uh, directly about those service opportunities. One is the aforementioned update video, if you haven't seen that already. And there is also a specified web page that serves as a bit of a link library, which has all of our online content since the beginning of our time in quarantine. Our primary purpose of making more and better disciples of Jesus has not diminished. We're often reminded of that truthful adage that the church is not a building. And did you ever think that the reality of that would become so very clear so very quickly? If the way we give is, which is out of generosity, which is out of obedience, which is out of worship, if, if that's any gauge of how well we as a church understand what our purpose is, well, it's pretty clear that we understand it well. God has been faithful. You have been faithful. Uh, we're going to continue to trust the Lord with our finances as we trust Him with all else. Ways to tithe and ways to give are also in the description below. Uh, may we all continue to do so sacrificially and regularly and joyfully. As always, feel free to reach out to any one of our pastors directly. Um, if you have any questions or clarifications or prayer requests or needs of any of those kinds of things, their emails are below as well. Before we log off, uh, let me leave us with a portion of scripture from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, and it says this, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Amen. Have a great day.